Did you guys see the James Dolan yes. letter? The owner of the New York Knicks, he got an email. Was it an email or a letter? Yeah, it was an email, okay, from a guy named Irving Bierman, who said, uh, I have been a Knicks fan since 1952. At one stage, I thought that you did a wonderful thing when you acquired everything from your dad. However, since then, it has been all downhill. You're working with Isaiah Thomas and everything else regarding the Knicks. Bringing on Phil Jackson was a positive beginning, but low-balling Steve Kerr was a disgrace to the Knicks. The bottom line is that you merely continued to interfere with the franchise. As a Knicks fan for in excess of 60 years, I am utterly embarrassed by your dealings with the Knicks. Sell them so their fans can at least look forward to growing them in a positive direction. Obviously, money is not the only thing. You have done a lot of utterly stupid business things with the franchise. Please no more, respectfully. <laughs> so this guy has been a 60-year fan, so he's yeah. got to be, what, almost 70, maybe? But, but how many times have, have we heard about fans telling the owners, you suck, you're terrible, whatever? Sure. But there is some reasoning within this. There is some reasoning within this. I also liked how he randomly all capitalized yeah, a bunch of words. Which is good. <laughs> right. Which is a little touch of the it's, crazy. It's the point across, it's though. A, it's a little touch of the crazy. Whenever you see, whenever I get tweets from people that, that oddly capitalize things, it's a little bit of touch of the crazy. But I appreciate that. There's nothing other than basically saying, you know, uh, at one stage I thought you did a wonderful thing when you acquired everything from your dad. That's, that's the cheap shot in a way. Cheap shot. Everything else is not too far off of what's described about how James Dolan has run the Knicks. By the way, two above 500 seasons in the last 14 years. Oof. 14 years. Oof. How many years? 14. I grew up watching the Rory Sparrow, Michael Ray Richardson Knicks. Ooh, I saw Michael Ray Richardson. My brother and I saw Marvin Webster in a diner once in, 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 um, in, Rockland, uh, in the Rockland County area, okay? And we flipped out. The eraser, the human eraser, Marvin Webster, Bill Cartwright. Bernard King, to me, is a god who should float on the planet Earth. He is the, a god. <laughs> when he went back-to-back 50-point -back games, remember that? He did that, I believe, in two road games in Texas. He did it. Bernard King is, I, I, I mean, seriously, he is, he is up, he, he, he's, and with me, he's in the pantheon of Mattingly, okay? Really? Yes. See, I never knew you were such a huge hoops guy. I am. Well, James Dolan beat it out of me. <laughs> he has beaten it out of me. He is, you have, this man has beaten <laughs> it out of me, man. Beaten it out of me. And I'll tell you what, Isaiah Thomas, this guy, we are all Irving Bierman. He is 100% right. As a diehard Nick fan, there are three guys who I hated, hated. Jordan is above it all, okay? Jordan is absolutely above it all. Three guys, as a Nick fan, I was personally off offended by their just v visuals, just I know, seeing I know them. one of them for sure. Larry Bird is one. Larry Bird is one of them, okay? He kicked our ass all the time, and I just despised him. I just hated everything about the Celtics. ML Carr waving his his the towel. His towel. <laughs> I know I'm dating myself here. Hated him. With all due respect to the Dan Patrick program, and I've told this to the man's face, Reggie Miller's number two. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie Miller is number two. What he did with the choke sign and the whole thing with Spike Lee, I get it. You know what? and someone from Indiana doing it to, to the big bad boys in New York City, I get it. I know what he stands for and I know how great he is. Man, did I hate him. <laughs> and number three. Rick Smiths. No, sir, right. not the Flying Dutchman. Number three, <laughs> I went to the University of Michigan between 1986 and 1990, the bad boys. The bad boys before Jordan got really good in Chicago, the bad boys were standing in Patrick Ewing's way. The bad boys. Lambeer, Mahorn, and led by the devil himself. <laughs> I said that. Wow. <laughs> I'm talking as a fan here. I'm talking real get it. Irving Bierman. I am oddly capitalizing my statement here. <laughs> but I think you're calling Isaiah Thomas the devil. He, to me, he was. <laughs> to, to me, he was. As a Nick fan, 
Again, fan is short for fanatic here, and I am oddly capitalizing things in my statement here. <laughs> you definitely are. <laughs> to go ahead and say this guy is gonna run the Knicks franchise after all of that? Are you kidding me? And the way he ran the franchise and you stick by him? Of course as a fan I'm running away, I'm not caring anymore. Certainly when then you go ahead and have two winning seasons in 14 years. James Dolan beat the Knicks fan out of me. And then I see him basically respond to the letter I said, this is what he said, people. An owner of a franchise, who, by the way, I'm reading this letter from a, a Forbes.com article saying why James Dolan can laugh after firing off Rudy email to Knicks fan because he's worth a gajillion dollars. And that's why he could sit here and do this. He doesn't care. This is the whole point. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. He's got a gajillion dollars. He can play, his, he can play in his, his rock and roll band all he wants. I think he got Amari Stoudemire and Carmelo Anthony to play kazoos because he was setting a record, some sort of bizarre kazoo record. Well, they're not playing basketball, so they can play kazoo. He says, Mr. Bierman, you are a sad person. Why would anybody write such a hateful letter? I am just guessing, but I'll bet your life is a mess and you are a hateful mess. What have you done that anyone would consider positive or nice? I am betting nothing. In fact, I'll bet you are negative force in everyone who comes in contact with you. I'm reading directly. You most likely have made your family miserable. Alcoholic, maybe. I just celebrated my 21 year anniversary of sobriety. You should try it. Maybe it will help you become a person that folks would like to have around. In the meanwhile, two separate words, start rooting for the Nets because the Knicks don't want you. Respectfully. That's my favorite part. <laughs> James Dolan. <laughs> Respectfully. Could you imagine an NFL owner writing this? What a major media conflagration this would cause? Can you imagine if Jerry Jones wrote that? Bob Kraft wrote that? They never would. But could you imagine if any NFL owner did that? Which is, again, another th point I'm trying to make here is the NFL's held to a totally different standard in our sports universe. This would be major huge poop storm. This should be that an owner of a professional franchise team, not just any professional franchise team, the team that plays in what's called the world's most famous arena, the place where so much history is made, even to the point, what are the odds Mike Krzyzewski would get his 1,000th career win in Madison Square Garden? How infinitesimal are those chances? This building has seen everything. It is a cathedral, and this man is running it? This man who writes a letter like this, who's beaten the Nick fan out of me? He had me up until he went the alcoholic route with it. What do you mean he had you? Not not like, you can't write this letter. You, you can't write it. You can't write it as an owner, but we always say we don't want people the vanilla answer. We don't want the vanilla response. He gave the guy back a response. Can I please have your attention? You betray the law! Chris Law's grand sweeping statements. I'm just saying, this You're is defending the, James the, Dolan? I'm not defending James Dolan. I'm saying this is the email that Irvin Bierman forwarded on. How many other emails has he sent James Dolan that maybe we didn't see that he deals with? You hit delete. Oh, you, yeah, you that, that's, that's the smart delete. move. I'm, I'm, I'm You've just got saying. a billion dollars. You are running a business in the 21st century. He owns Madison Square Garden. The customer is always right. It should be. So what? Hit delete or respond, I'm sorry you feel this way. We're going to turn it around. That's what the adult does. That's what an owner does in the 21st century, unless you don't care what people think. You don't care what the fans think. And i just show, just show you how passionate I am about it. This man beat the Nick fan out of me. He beat it out of me. When was the last time you went to a game? I, well, Marshall and I went last year for the, for, during the Super Bowl. Oh, okay. When uh, I, we, we went one night. And it was great. My childhood just came steaming back in. I love that building. I grew up in that building. My parents took my brother and I to a, a Christmas game, a Christmas Day game between the Nets and the Knicks. It's one of my favorite childhood memories is going in that building. It's an incredible, magical spot. And, 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 and Knicks fans have to hold their nose walking in there. And we could try and look past it. And Phil Jackson is hopefully the answer. Hopefully the answer, because it is such a super fun site that this man inherited, it's going to take some time.
this is an abomination, this letter. And I'll tell you what, if an NFL owner had written this, oh. it would be off the charts. It would be a totally different story if an NFL owner fan had called somebody sad and maybe an alcoholic. Good Lord. He could have he could have replied in a way that would have been a, a fun, positive PR move. Like, hey, look at the letter I have to deal with from a fan, and he could have written something. But or is it not smart and intelligent? He chose not to, which is But is, is it not a bigger story because we just assume and take for granted that he's just a blubbering idiot and how he's Or he is just he is just a guy who is who is doesn't care. But man, I don't know. I don't know if what the NBA is going to do about this. If they should do anything. Adam about Silver it. has to do something. Or at least pick right. out the phone and say, "What are you thinking, Jim? What are you thinking? We got the All Star Game coming up. By the way, in this man's house, this man is hosting the NBA All Star Game, and you don't think he's going to have some type of moment with the media? And what are they going to talk about when he's there? They could talk about his one win team or how many wins they have. I don't even, honestly, I don't even know. I don't even know. I've lost track. They're, it's still in the single digits, correct? I can tell you, Rich, they're 10 and 41 okay, right now. Okay, they cracked it. At least you have the Jets, though, still in New York. Uh, you know what, man? They have the worst record in the NBA. And, 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 uh, but I'm not going to sit here and say Phil Jackson doesn't have a plan and he's, he's, you got to give him some time. And, it's the, and by the way, James Dolan, right move. Go get Phil. Throw a billion dollars at him to drag him off the beach in Malibu to go hang in New York and try and fix this thing for a franchise that he once helped lead to glory. Perfect move. Should have done that. In Isaiah Thomas, are you kidding me? The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.